Hey, my friends, if you are looking for a faster, a better way to grow and scale your online business, you very likely do not need another course or to be reading more books about how to grow your business. What you need instead is a personalized, cohesive growth strategy for your business, along with one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching support and accountability to help you every step of the way. Well, that's exactly what my Accelerator Coaching Program delivers for you. Accelerator is an intimate 12-month rolling open enrollment, so it's ongoing open enrollment, personalized coaching program and mastermind experience for established online course creators and coaches who want to take the guesswork out of optimizing and grow towards a profitable seven figure plus business without more anxiety, without more stress and hours spent in front of the computer. Accelerator is about thinking differently and bigger about your business, about your team, your funnels, your ads, your vision, et cetera, so that you can create more profit, more impact with less hustle. So Accelerator is application only. And again, this is rolling ongoing open enrollment. So if you want to learn more and apply, just go to rickmulready.com forward slash accelerator. Hey, my friend, welcome to the Art of Online Business podcast. My name is Rick Mulready and I'm an online business coach. I'm an ads expert and most importantly, I'm a dad. And this show is where we help established online course creators and coaches create more profit, more impact with less hustle. All right, let's get into it. What's up, my friends? Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode number 599. We are so close. Next episode is 600 episodes. And I can't even believe it's been 600 episodes already here on the show. We started the show. I started the show in the summer of 2015. And here we are 600 episodes later. This summer, here of 2022, we're going to hit uh, 9 million downloads in that time, which just blows my mind. So thank you for listening to the podcast. If you're, if this is your first time here, welcome my friend. Thank you so much for tuning in. Super appreciate you. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to the podcast. And if this is your 599th episode, thank you, my friend, for uh, being here with me on this journey. And I feel like we're just getting started. So anyway, on today's episode, I wanna talk about if you have a team, inevitably, inevitably, you are going to experience frustration with your team. This is a conversation that comes up pretty much all the time with our Accelerator members, whether they are just starting out building their team or they already have a team and they're experiencing frustration within the team for one reason or another. Now, what I want to do here is kind of list out a few things that I recommend doing and giving you an exercise to do with knowing that there's a lot of different ways to approach when you're having some frustrations. You are frustrated as the CEO with what's happening or maybe not happening within your team. And so the first thing I want you to look at is because by the way, let me back up for one second. These types of challenges that come up with your team, they come up for everyone. And when you have a fine tuned team that everybody is heading in the same direction, everybody is, you know, pulling towards the same mission and vision of your business and just providing an amazing experience working for your business. Like that's when just there's so much fun to be had within the business and within your team. Okay. Now, again, inevitably, there's going to be times that come up during, as you're running your business, where things aren't running so smoothly. And so that's what I want to talk about here today and give you one exercise to do that can help you get things back on track. Okay. Now, the first thing that I want to encourage you to do and ask yourself as the CEO, because remember, as the CEO, we always take responsibility for our own actions, right? So we take 100% responsibility. 
And so the first thing I want you to do is when things aren't going the way that you want them to be going in your business is looking at yourself. Where do, where do you need to be doing things differently in terms of leadership when the team isn't working as well as you want, or maybe they're not doing things that you should be doing, et cetera. Look at your leadership first and foremost. Is there a breakdown there? Can you be doing a better job as a leader of setting expectations and giving context and letting people know like, hey, you own this project over here. Ownership means you own it, right? I'm not telling you every step of the way to do whatever that is. Okay. So that's the first thing is look at yourself as the leader of your business and where are there opportunities for you to improve your leadership? Because I will tell you that there are certainly things that you can be doing to improve when you're having problems with the team. Look at yourself first, because there's always areas for improvement. Okay. Especially when we take full responsibility for what's happening in the business. Even if you're not responsible for something, it is still your business, thus you are fully responsible, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing, what I see a lot of people doing in their team is they take the people that are already on their team who are maybe having some challenges and not doing what you hope them to, to be doing, what you think they're supposed to be doing, and you start making changes or thinking about the team through the lens of the people that you already have on the team. Here's what I mean by that. If you have somebody on your team who's not performing the way that you want them to be performing, or they're doing a great job, however, there are things that they're not doing that you think they should be doing. Maybe they don't even know that they're supposed to be doing those things. And so what I want you to do is take a step back and look at, this is the whole right seats, wrong people, or right people, wrong seats sort of thing that, that, that they talk about in Traction, the book Traction by Gina Wickman. It's looking at your team, right? But take a step back and look at what is needed in your business to fulfill on the goals that you have for the business, right? Revenue goals, how much you want to work, et cetera, et cetera, what kind of impact that you want to have. and Look at what kind of roles do you need in your business to achieve those goals? Notice I'm not saying take the people that you already have in your business and put them here, have them doing whatever there is that they're doing because they're already doing it. No, we want to remove people's names in this exercise here. We're not firing them or anything, but in this exercise, we are removing that person's name and we are looking at the business objectively. And we are looking at the roles that we think we need in the business. So for example, we need a whatever, community manager. We need a marketing assistant. We need a executive assistant, whatever it might be, right? And so we name the roles and then we go from there and we start to do things like we get to daydream if you will, we get to daydream, like what kind of characteristics does somebody have in the marketing assistant role, right? What are their tasks? What is that person doing as the marketing assistant? How do they do things in the business? How does that role communicate with other people in the business? How do they communicate with you as the CEO? What's their attitude? What types of intangibles do you need to make sure that they have in terms of personality and work ethic and all that stuff. What drives this person, right? That you think, how does this role fit into the overall vision? What kind of education and training do I want for this person in this role? Okay. And so you get to build out your ideal role and the description for this role in terms of the questions I just mentioned. So for example, one thing, that is really important to me, and you may have heard the term intrapreneur, right? So this is basically an entrepreneur within your business. So they're entrepreneurial within the role of within your business, meaning they're coming up with new ideas, they're implementing and they're taking ownership, et cetera. That's something that's extremely important to me. 
So that could be a quality that we want to make sure that the marketing assistant has. Boom, check. So notice I'm not saying, oh, we put, you know, Jan in this role or like Jan's doing this. So this is what we need from Jan. No, we're, we're removing Jan quote, just in this, in this exercise, we're not getting rid of her. Maybe we are, maybe we are, but the exercise is such that we are defining the roles that we need without attaching names to them. Okay. And what are the roles that we need in order to achieve the goals that we want and achieve the vision, the mission that we want to be accomplishing in our business. Then once we have clarity around this, then you can start to look at the people that you currently have in these roles. Maybe you already have an executive assistant. Maybe you already have a, a marketing assistant or a community manager or what have you, right? Now you get to notice, you know, open up a doc or a notebook or whatever it is over a few weeks, start to take notice of what are they doing? What do you wish that they were doing with whatever the tasks that they're responsible for? Okay. And so you get to track these things and, and take note of what you really want out of this role. And then from there, then you get to see like, oh, you know what? We have a gap over here. We need somebody to whatever it is, manage the podcast or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So like, oh, we have a gap over here. Okay. Well, we need to fill that role because it will help us achieve our goals, our vision, our mission, et cetera. So then we need to write a job description for that role. Now, going back to once you've clearly defined the roles, then and only then do you start to look at, okay, I currently have these people on my team in their roles that they're currently doing. Are they in the right seats? Because maybe for that marketing assistant role, you want an entrepreneur, you want, you know, somebody who's very driven, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. And so you get to look at, oh, the person who's currently in the marketing assistant role, not checking those boxes, right? They're not all those things that I've just outlined and, and daydreamed and brainstormed what I want for this role. But I have this person over here in a different role who is all of those things and who does get marketing and comes up with ideas and so forth. So that might be a case of, you know, right person, wrong seat. And for the current marketing assistant, the person that you have just in this hypothetical, it could be a case of wrong seat, right person, right? So they might be better served in a different area of your business or you might realize that they don't have any of the qualities as it turns out that you are really looking for, for the roles within your business that align with your goals and your vision and your mission. So in that case, then you get to decide what you want to do with that person. You know, is it, and that's outside the scope of what, what I want to talk about here, but is it a performance improvement plan, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the point here that I really want you to take away from this is if you are feeling challenged with your team and you feel like things should be looking or working differently and people should really be doing different things that they're actually doing within their role, step number one is look at yourself first. Look at yourself as a leader and where do you need to be doing things differently in terms of your leadership? Because we take full responsibility for ourselves and for our business. And then the second thing is you get to daydream and brainstorm and just create your ideal picture of each role in your business that is needed to achieve your goals. We are removing in the exercise, just recapping here, we're removing the names that you currently have in your team and just solely focusing on the roles first. And then from there, then you look at, once you get clarity and all that, then you look at the people you have on your team, right? Do they align with all the characteristics and everything that you just mentioned? If they do, are they in the right seats? If they're not, is somebody over in a different role, are they better suited to this role over here or, and vice versa? It's this exercise that a lot of people get hung up on because 
we so often try to do this exercise through the lens of the people that you already have on your team, rather than taking a step back, removing the name, if you will, and looking solely at what does your business need in terms of roles, and then looking at, okay, what do I need to do to fill this role over here or this role over here? And it could just simply be from within the people that you already have on your team, or could be, you know what, this person's not quite a fit anymore. We need to make a change and I need to hire a couple people or hire one person. Okay. So this exercise is game changing. I've done this several times over the years in the business. And every time I do it, I learn something new, right? And again, there's all different aspects that we can dive into here within this. But what I really want to do on this quick tip episode for you is just dive into this one exercise, removing the names, looking solely at the roles. Do you have the right people in the right seats and vice versa? You know, wrong seat, right person, right person, wrong seat sort of thing. But we can't do that until we remove them from the equation and just look at the roles first, create those. What do we truly want from that role? And then we can look at the people on our team to see if we have the right fits. Cool. All right, my friends, thank you as always for listening to the show. Super appreciate you. Hey, if you've not already left a rating and review for the show over on Apple podcast, I looked at the other day, I think we have like 80% of our listenership of the show here is on Apple podcast, which I find really fascinating, which is super cool. So it is still very much very helpful to make sure that you subscribe to the show or follow it on whatever platform that you're listening on. And if you wouldn't mind leaving a quick rating and review for the show over there on Apple Podcasts, super helpful. Thank you, my friend. Until next time, be well. I'll talk to you soon.